Human expression is an instinct. Nobody taught us how to do it. No one told us to do it. It's just a natural instinct that's in us all. Art predates written language, along with the ancient music that was created to entertain, celebrate, and even heal. For thousands of years, ancient people from all over the world, with no way of meeting one another, all somehow developed art in some way, shape, or form. I, I always said, uh, art is, is life on paper, because it's a metaphor for life in a way, because you learn a lot through art, which has to do with life. If art reflects what we see, then music reflects what we feel. That feeling comes from our hearts, which all move to a beat. Let them express themselves, because the children, when they are young, they know instinctively that for them, this is a healing process. They come from school, they are sad, they go in their room and they paint. They paint it off. Who taught you how to draw? Mm, I don't remember. I, yeah, I think I, think I teach it myself. A lot of people like to do art. It's something where you express yourself and creativity comes in where you can draw anything you want or paint anything you want. It's up to you. But what about those children who don't have that kind of outlet? Those children who would never be given that opportunity, simply because of where they were born. Whether it's a conflict zone, impoverished area, or a natural disaster site, children deserve the right to be kids. A right to express themselves, and a right to their instinctive healing ability. Because you have no idea how powerful it is. At 11 years old, I wanted to be a gangster first. So I was from Chicago, and I didn't have a mother, so um, we were exposed to it all. And you, see, you want to be what you see. We broke into an armory because we took over that place at 10 years old, because we'd seen it all our life, you know. And I broke into the supervisor's office, and I saw a spinet piano in there, and I almost closed the door. And something inside said, idiot, go back in that room. And I went in that room, went over to that piano, and every cell in my body said, this is what you'll do the rest of your life. I had no idea. That story shows the natural connection people have with the arts. Just imagine if Quincy Jones had closed that door and continued the path he was on. But every day, millions of children are in the same situation Quincy Jones was, just because they were born into unfortunate circumstances. It tends to be the last, or one of the last areas of focus when governments are trying to to support society here. Uh, and understandably so in many ways. You have situations where feeding people, um, housing people, educating people on the basic level of education is such a priority to do. And if there's any spare funds, then that should just go to educating those who, who don't have the ability to do that themselves. So teaching people to play music and understand and, and, and read music and understand what that means and what that could how that could enrich their lives, and, or the drama, or the arts, or understanding their own heritage through, through the arts, uh, it tends to get left behind. And if these kids get guidance and have the chance to paint and do sculpture, or do music, or do, to paint and draw, they have a big chance to heal. So the goal became simple, to give those kids a chance. How old was I? I was 19. I met Better at Oxford. At he was 19 years old. And my first impression, and I have to be very honest and, and uh, apologize to Quincy beforehand, uh, I didn't know what, I mean, I, I knew that he was a, a music producer, but I didn't know the magnitude of what he did. He is the all-time most nominated Grammy artist, with a total of 79 nominations and 27 awards. He's worked with everyone from Frank Sinatra, Ray Charles, all the way to Celine Dion and Michael Jackson. He is a seven-time Academy Award nominee, has built empires across music, movies, television, and print, produced the biggest selling album of all time, the biggest selling single of all time, and has one of the most successful careers spanning over 60 years. 
the thing that struck me about him was, first of all, his humility, but also his ability to connect with someone as young as, as I was then. Um, and, and that, I felt, was something very special. Um, really, people who have you know, seen everything, been through so much, but still able to, to give time and energy towards uh, kids, um, which I was at the time. We are the ones who make a brighter day, so let's start giving. There's a choice we're making. We're saving our lives. It's true, we'll make a better day, just you and me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So we started to talk about, about what specifically we could do and specific projects and ideas that we could uh, do together um, to make that, that difference. And I said, you know, Q, let's do We Are the World for the Middle East. And his first answer to me was better, you know, it's been done. We feel close enough to each other to tell each other not what we think we, they ought to hear, but what we need to tell them. The idea was to use the We Are the World concept and raise money for children across the Arab region and who better to do that than Quincy Jones himself? Although Quincy immediately agreed to the idea, he said that this project had to have something new. I, to be honest, didn't really understand what he meant by a new idea. I said, well, why, if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. I mean, it, 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 was, it was, had tremendous impact. People understand the melody, people understand what it was about. You see all these people standing in the same room singing about a common cause or a common uh, goal. So um, now I understand what he meant by something new. What Quincy Jones meant was a new song. Kevin Campbell was 12 years old. We had a number one record with him called Tomorrow. Book means tomorrow. And just like that, the project had a new song and a name. It, it's, it's a natural because it says tomorrow will be better you, better me. It's about people coming together and growing as human beings, a natural law. Uh, no choice. So now they had a song, they had a producer, so it was time to assemble the team. And it was um, in March, at the end of the March 2011, they asked if I would join the team and move out to Morocco for, for six weeks. <laughs> so that was on a Friday and I, I moved my, my family, two children and my wife, to Morocco um, the following Monday. So three days later we were out in Morocco for six weeks recording Bukra. Morocco uh, really came forward um, in a very sort of uh, positive way. Um, they were the first to sort of uh, really drive the concept. They loved the, to support the, pro the project. And, uh, you know, really represented and not only invited everybody to come as artists and the production and crew, but also really took care of us all while we were out there. Within, th within a few moments, I realized the scale of the project that they were trying to put together. So I said, you've got five weeks to pull this off. And it is an insane amount of work with the extent of the artists we want to bring into it, uh, you know, the names and the caliber of those talents, as well as putting them together for the first time in a studio. So we're going to go and record other artists who were not able to make it here in their own cities, and also do some video footage for the music video in their own cities as well. But at that stage, we had no confirmation that who the Arabic artists were and who would actually be contributing to the song. The only person that was officially signed on was Khaled Masahir. Quincy Jones, a fan of the Arabic artists, I think it was the first time we had a conversation with Roma. كان في مهرجان في Roma, and I was a member of the Arabic artists. وأنا كنت من الوطن العربي أنا بس أنا والشاب خالد ومن بعد اتصل فيا كلفني أن أعمل ميلودي في موسيقى جوا أغنيته فعملت عملت له شيء جاء وسط الأغنية داخل أغنية اسمها بكرة تمورا. The three elements: there's rhythm, harmony, and melody. Melody is is king or queen. And it's the best song is when you have a great lyricist like a Johnny Mercer or somebody. To write the Arabic lyrics, to make them really genuine. And so we contacted Majd Rumi. 
So with the key pieces in place, it was time to get to work. Although things started to fall into place, Quincy felt that one more person needed to be added to the production team. So he called upon the Moroccan-born, multi-Grammy award-winning producer, Red One. هي الأغنية هي هذه عندها علاقة ب tomorrow أنا هي بكرة هي غدا إن شاء الله يكون واحد النهار أحسن وبس إن شاء الله أن نعطي واحد نوع من الإنسبيراسيون ل ل ل الشباب الشباب والأطفال المستقبل بشي يحسوا بحال إحساس بوزيتيف والعرب كاملين بين بشي فيقوا يفكروا في الحلول ما يفكروش في المغرب في المشاكل و ونيجاتيف ونوضوا الفوضى وهذا الشيء يفكروا في بوزيتيف شنو انا عمل مولاتي كيفاش نقدروا نهديك وواحد يحل برا يحس براسو بانه مسؤول ب ب ب بالفكره ديال لا بوزيتيفيتي والحمد لله السيمانه دازت جميله بزاف انا كل واحد كان واعي بعد فهاد التسجيل ديالنا كان واعي بالفكره العامه سو ذيس از وير ذا ماجيكس غانا هابن ذيس وير اولويز هابنز ذي اول لوك ذا سيم تو ريد وان هير ريد وان اون از واي سو اول ذا انغريديانتس كامين توجيذر All the ingredients coming together, and you got to cook, cook the cake, <laughs> make the cake. Even the original lyricist for the song "Tomorrow," Grammy Award winner Saida Garrett, came forward to help. Very quickly, along with Majda Rumi's lyrics, the song began to take shape. The biggest concern that I had, and I didn't necessarily share with everybody, was turning up on the day and having no artists. So I was really concerned, and, and we, we turned up at the, at the meet and greet in Quincy Suite, and uh, it was approaching 11, and nobody was there. And uh, I started to get nervous. And uh, 15 minutes later, and, and we were the only ones in the room. I mean, it was only the, the production people, and Q and I, and Red One, and having a great time, but there were no artists around. And then, you know, five minutes later, an artist walks in. Okay, we got one. Another five minutes, two, three, four, five, six, boom. By 11.30, we had a room filled with about 14, 15 artists. Now this is, you know, almost midnight the night before recording. And that moment was, uh, you know, we're, we're getting there, you know, it's, it's happening now. The next day, recording for the song and filming for the music video started. Okay. Quincy Jones, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> He's rolling. Okay, and action! Malik Akkad, uh, I had not met before this project. You know, Malik's father, uh, the late uh, Mustafa Akkad, is really respected tremendously in, uh, in the region. Malik's father, Mustafa, very unfortunately and sadly, um, passed away um, in, a, in a bombing uh, in Jordan um, not so long ago. 
Malik's involvement in this project was very exciting because, again, of his Middle Eastern roots and origins, but his ability to relate to the West because he, he was really brought up there and trained there. We're shooting outside Rabat with several of the artists. We're getting some exterior shots and uh, some emotional shots. AB, AB, the first one, the second one, so they hear there's a difference. <laughs> احنا كنا نتمنى انه توصل الرساله وانا كنت متقصد انه ادخل مقطع فيها اللي هو من كلمات الاستاذ كريم العراقي انه صداقه كل الاديان احمد وعيسى وموسى كنت كثير حريص انه هذا هذا المقطع يدخل في داخل الاغنيه وسط الاغنيه انه هاي الرساله كنت اتمنى ان توصل لكل العالم يعني just an amazing amazing moment of my life actually the recording was uh, beautiful it was a lot it was intensive and that was just for the morocco portion of filming and recording the rest of the project would be created in doha <laughs> Just as we begin to record in Doha, getting prepared, morning, having breakfast, all of a sudden get a message that Bukhra is all over the news. My immediate reaction was, oh great, people are talking about it, the artists are here, it's, it's just perfect timing. Little did I know that three or four rumors spun out of control. Incredible, sensational stories were being printed. One about how Bukhra now supports the revolution and become the uh, sort of the Arab Springs voice, and uh, another about how um, the organizers of Bukhra are now involved politically and the song has a different agenda. Um, another rumor came out about how one of the artists, uh, the big artist on board, had dropped out of the project. Um, and all of these created a ripple effect amongst the stars and singers that were arriving in Doha to record that week. Suddenly dealing with this tumultuous wave of scandal, the publicists there for the project were around the clock working on taming the story, putting out the truth, and really getting on with the job that was supposed to be done. And so that's what they did, because nothing was going to stop this from happening. Okay, here we go, and action guys. So it's all coming together, there's, you know, it must be hundreds of people trying to make this happen. And everyone is doing it for that same reason, uh, which, is, uh, which is this collaborative effort for, for a better tomorrow. The final stages of the Booker Project coincidentally happened alongside the Arab Spring, a time of conflict, divides, and uncertainty. This now gave greater meaning and purpose to the song, to bring hope and unity you know, was very moving for everyone. And we all realized the importance and the scale of what this project really is about. It's no longer just a song. Uh, this, is, this is a moment. But artists coming together um, for no money, um, to raise money and to raise awareness for a common cause, and really the diversity of artists from across the region, uh, the region I mean the Middle East, North Africa region, to produce an Arabic song of this nature is a first of its kind. At a time more important than ever in our region's modern history, artists and musicians from every Arab nation across the Middle East and North Africa have come together for the very first time on an important and iconic charity song entitled Bukra, which means tomorrow in Arabic. The Bukra Initiative will support the important role that music and the arts play in helping children learn, achieve and succeed. Join us and be part of history on 11-11-11 for the global launch of Bokra.
بس اللي نحتاج الإيمان الحب ونكران الناس وصداقة كل الأديان من كل عرق ومن كل جن صح ضميرك يا إنسان بكرة اللم الحلوة of Booker was one of the biggest in Arabic music history. Shooting straight to number one, 
becoming the fastest moving Arabic record of all time and hitting over 10 million YouTube views. كل المطربين العرب كبار النجوم اشتركوا فيه من غير اي مقابل ما فيش دافع غير الحب when you listen to it it's it makes you feel happy it doesn't make you feel like uh, when you feel sympathy about ourselves بتمنى انه هالعمل يساعد ويحسس انه فعلا العالم العربي هو دائما مترابط مش بس عن طريق فنانينه عن طريق مواطنينه أتمنى بإذن الله أنه إحنا كلنا نتطلع بأمل وهالأغنية تساعد أو المشروع هيدا يساعد أنه العالم يعني تشوف المستقبل زي ما إحنا شايفينه بالأغنية فحب أنه يوصل من, من يوصل هدفنا وحبنا أنه إن شاء الله يوصل السلام ويعم أنا شايفة أن الأغنية بصفة عامة هي بتناقش قضايا كتير جدا وفي ناس فعلا بتتأثر إذا كانت أغنية عن الحب احنا بن بنوصل رساله للعالم ان احنا العالم عالم واحد هو فبامانه فخور جدا واتمنى ان شاء الله هو العمل اكيد راح يضيف لي انا كفنان بس اتمنى اني انا راح اضيف بهالعمل بهالمشاركه نتمنى ان شاء الله ان مثل هذه الاعمال تعطي شكل احلى لبكره مثل هذه مثل كاسم الاغنيه وان نقدم اماني اكبر وان يكون عندنا تكون متفائلين اكثر حتى على الاقل على الاقل نبين هذه الروح المتلاحمه بيننا كشعوب عربيه ان شاء الله Although Booker's message of love and peace was heard and felt around the Arab region the intent was always to spread more than just a message the time had come to do just that to use Booker's proceeds to make a change. Our CEO in the UK office uh, met him during an event in London, and he introduced us through email. And Bed um, immediately responded that he said, yes, that sounds great. Why don't you come and meet us and let's talk about it? And uh, that was the beginning. In the next two years, 100% of the project's donations and proceeds will support music and arts programs in schools, orphanages, and for special needs children across the Arab world. They're trying to uh, promote art education in the Middle East. And for us, that was such a great alignment with our program called HEART that we are doing in the Middle East as well. Uh, it's, it's an acronym actually, it stands for Healing and Education Through the Arts. The arts have been proven uh, for a long time to provide a safe mechanism for children to express themselves. Oh, I like colors. The color? Colors, take a pencil. And um, I also like to draw families and write stuff. I like drawing cartoons like anime and manga. I love drawing flowers. A lot of people unknowingly use art as a form of expression and as a form of escape. But for some others, it means a lot more than just that. Uh, when, everyone is, when everyone is asleep, I wake up. Yeah, I paint. Just be creative. I put my hand on a paintbrush and just do this. It's a paint right here. This is nice. Mm. I see it everywhere. Oh, I feel happy. Here comes my heart. Uh, that's, uh, that's my signature move, squares. I, I like to hug people, but m most of all, my brother. What is a war? Really very bad. Why, why are they bad? What do they do that's bad? Uh, they, uh, they love business. Yeah. And what happens when you love business? Uh, they destroy everything. No one buys happiness. Love is love. Seeing how art affected these people made us wonder what it would be like for the children who'd be helped by Bukra. Bottom line is you got to go to know. You can get the internet, TV, move, uh, 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 Newspapers, television doesn't mean a thing. You got to go to know. So with those words from Quincy, we set off to see just how Booker was going to change lives.
the children are uh, quite amazing. Um, the schools that we focus on here in Jordan um, are primary schools that are in areas uh, on the outskirts of Amman, the capital city, and these areas have higher rates of poverty than other areas in the region. So we're specifically targeting children um, who are more likely to live in conditions of poverty, um, children who, whether as a result of poverty or a result of other issues, um, might have a higher probability of being exposed to stressful um, issues or stressful conditions. Um, in some of these areas, we have refugees who have come from neighboring countries, so children who have fled um, very stressful conditions and, and therefore can benefit from this type of extra uh, programming in their schools. We had the chance to visit three schools in Jordan where the HARP program was taking place. Perhaps the children were just shy at first, but the first thing we noticed was they weren't smiling. The children were each given a large piece of paper and coloring pencils. They were then asked to trace out their bodies on the paper and identify where on their bodies they felt different emotions and feelings. Those feelings would later be shared with their peers. This is an indirect, friendly way of getting the children to talk about their feelings. What was most surprising was how little explanation and guidance the children needed. They had never done this exercise before, but as soon as the teacher said go, it was as if they'd practiced this every day of their lives. It's amazing. It's the, the first time we come in to do the training, we're just with the teachers. So we're doing it with the adults. And in some of the cases, we pretend like, like we're children. We act it out and we mimic the way it would happen in a classroom setting. But once you get to see the actual kids doing it, it's amazing. What was even better was to see it working. We've seen, we've seen the type of outcome that we anticipated, which was that over time, children would develop more resiliency and more coping mechanisms to address the stressful events in their lives. And as a result of that, their concentration um, in school would improve, their behavior would improve, their overall psychosocial well-being improved. They would become uh, happier, uh, more relaxed, um, and more confident. Another exercise for the children was for them to draw out the community they live in. They were also told they could add anything they wanted to the drawings. Usually when we do these exercises, we don't give them the instruction one time because this will distract them. And we don't want them to, to draw what, what it will be uh, at the end for the discussion. We want them to genuinely, naturally uh, draw their community. And then we will uh, go back to them and we will say that now we will discuss with each group what they will do and we will lead the discussion with the group to have them better understand their life conditions, the environment they are living, what they like in it, what they dislike in it, how they can make it a better life for the other children in the community. 
Even though most of the children were from humble backgrounds, they all said the same thing when asked if they were missing anything. But there was one child that wanted something. في تغيرات على الأطفال لحتى أنا أكثر شيء بصف ثاني مثلاً في طبلة كان منعزل ودائماً باستمرار مكشر وزعلان وهيك صار يضحك وينبسط يعبر يعني عن مشاعره يعني كان وجهه صامت دائماً يعني أدخلت عليه الفرح أدخلت عليه الغضب أدخل وجهه هو هو صامت فبلش يعني يتفاعل معنا اسمه سند العبد العبد الله The next day, we visit a school where the students were a little older to see what the heart program could do for them. The ninth grade students began the session with a group song. Then they were split into pairs and given a beat to follow. The remaining students would then make as much noise as possible in an attempt to throw the pair off their beat. That exercise teaches the children musical time signatures, which relate to mathematical fractions. But more importantly, it's designed to show the students that they are in control of their emotions, regardless of their surroundings. فأنا بفطر الصبح المهم بجهز حالي أخذ شنتتي وأطلع يعني هو بيجي الباز يعني السبعة وربع السبعة وثلاثة يكون بيجي بخدني نصل على المدرسة ممكن سبعة ونص إذا طورت كتير كتير تمانية لربع لأن المدرسة تبلش تمانية the teachers at one of the schools told us that they had seen um, a successful experience. My understanding is that one of the students in, in one of the schools was a bit shy or a bit reserved um, because uh, she has a, a, a medical problem. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the medical problem is, but it results in, I think, a, a curvature of her spine, something that is noticeable but not debilitating in any way. And f as a result of that, was a bit shy about it, had never explained to her classmates what this problem was or, or what the issue was. And during one of the activities, she, she drew a picture, painted a picture of something related to this and then verbally communicated, explained to her classmates, her friends, what her experience had been and that it was through that process, that was the first time she had ever talked about that at school with her teachers and her friends and classmates.
في عندي السنة الجاية عام ثمانين خايف اني افوت عليها Her classmates and teachers reacted very positively, very, very supportively. Um, and that after that experience, uh, she became more confident and more engaged um, and more outgoing. My name is Noor. Uh, my oldest is uh, 14 years old. Uh, I'm from uh, Jordan, from, uh, exactly from Karak. He, uh, it's, uh, it's a strong, a strong uh, our relationship uh, with my friends and uh, with the teacher. She, she playing with us, so uh, we be a uh, friends and uh, our relationship uh, is not uh, only with a teacher to students, to uh, be a sister to sister. It was strange to see something so simple being so effective. But just imagine if this simple program never found Noor. Would she have ever shared how she felt? The ninth graders were then given the same task as the second graders were given, to see if anyone else would share. What are the challenges that are available in your reality, you as students in this age? What are the challenges, what are the challenges, what are the challenges, what are the challenges, what are the challenges that are available in your life? What are the challenges? The first thing is that we المنظر اللي انت تشوفيه على التلفزيون بسوريا وبالدول العربيه هاي كلها هاي لحالة نفسيا كثير بتعب كان لما يعني تشوفي اطفال ولسه يا حرام وما طبقوا شيء لحتى تصير قاعدين يتوفوا فعجبت شيء والله هاي عاملين تركيب مجتمعين يعني اه مجتمع السوري ومجتمع الاردني طالبات اللي هان اردنيات في عملوا مجتمع باماني هاي المجتمع اللي بتحكي عنه المجتمع اللي عاشته وعاصرته والمتالمه منه فبحكي مره ثانيه مس بحكي انه هو هذا مجتمع سوري هي بيت لو كلياتنا كل العائله يعني مجتمعه وكمان يعني كنا كلياتنا كل يومين او هيك يعني نعمل اجتماع وهلا ابدا ما عاد شفنا بعض وحتى كل الناس تفرقت وكل يوم بنصحى نصحى بدافع الصواريخ بس شوفي يعني بتنساتك برضه بتحبي مجتمع بينك راس مال العالم والله اكبر صح؟ وانه يعني وكمان الالوان اللي استخدمتيها كثير حلوه هذا معناه انه راح يعطيكي امل انك ترجع او تجتمعي مره ثانيه صح؟ ففيش شيء اسمه نهايه لهان بتوقف لا جميل فيك والحلو انك انت حطيتي مجتمعك مع مجتمعنا فاحنا اسره واحده بغض النظر عن المكان بغض النظر عن الـ يعني عن الـ الاشياء اللي انت حطيتيها ان شاء الله يعني انت ما تكوني خسرتي مجتمعك وراح ترجعي له بيوم من الايام اي مس وان شاء الله يعني احنا اكبر دعم لك واي شيء بدك اياه احنا مساعدينك فيه وما يعني مش مش فيش شيء اسمه نهايه الدنيا وبدان انت اشتركتي معنا موجوده معنا معناها انه لسه في داخلك اشياء هاي الاشياء اكيد 100% بتعطيك قوه بتعطيك اراده بتعطيك ان شاء الله امل انك ترجع وراح يصير ان شاء الله فهي دموعك ان شاء الله تكون بيوم دموع فرح مش دموع ان شاء الله بس So over time, what we see is that children who experience these types of programs, they, they are happier, they are more resilient, they do better in their learning, and they do better long term when they, not only throughout the course of their education, but when they transition from education into the workforce, into their adult life. Um, so not only do they have greater skill sets as adults, but their health outcomes improve. They have lower rates of heart disease, lower rates of mental illness, lower rates of diabetes. Um, so it's, it's something that will benefit them for their entire lives. Jordan shares borders with Syria, Iraq, and Palestine, which are all suffering from conflict. Currently, there are over 1.4 million refugees that have headed to the safety of Jordan. And this number is growing every day. Our initial plan when we discussed this was to start with uh, Palestine and Jordan as our pilot, but then from there move forward and expand this heart education to more Arab countries as well. So we're really hoping that we, that Bukra will raise more funds so that we can take this forward. In Ramallah, we ha we're working with about 25 schools, I think about 30,000 children. I feel in the bottom of my soul, I came from the ghetto, in Chicago and during the Depression. 
And when I see young kids that are, are at the bottom of the pyramid and they're struggling and trying to eat and trying to learn how to grow with education and everything else, my heart just melts, you know, because I was one of those kids. And giving them hope, hope that, but to believe in themselves that they can grow as a human being and not to take, have to take their circumstances for granted, that they have to be lowly because they were born in an unfortunate, unfortunate situation, conditions. And it's because uh, I identify with it. Every child is important. They all have rights and should all be given equal opportunity, regardless of where they're from. A portion of the funds were even given to children living in the United Arab Emirates. Through the Abu Dhabi Music and Arts Foundation, or ADMAF, orphans were given Arabic calligraphy classes to give them an outlet for expression, as well as bring them closer to their heritage. <laughs> As there are always new additions to this group of children, the artistic class has also helped with bonding the children together. On the other side of the spectrum, ADMAF also organized a local recital for private schools in the United Arab Emirates, giving them an opportunity to showcase their talents and experience an audience for the first time. I enjoy music, I feel it. And I feel like, yeah, I'm becoming a superstar like this. And when I see little kids throwing stones at rocket propelled grenades, I got a problem with that, you know. The young kids, you know, are getting killed. To think that when this is done, there will be that much more people who are thinking in the right way, who are communicating with others in the right way, with a sense of compassion. And will take, get us off of this path because we keep doing the same thing over and over and over. You don't agree with me, I don't agree with you, I'm gonna kill you. Sick. And that tomorrow really says it all. I mean, the lyrics, the English lyrics, uh, hope tomorrow will bring a better you, a better me. Whether or not tomorrow brings a better you and me is yet to be seen. The good thing is that choice is completely up to us. We can choose not to ignore. We can take a step towards making a difference. And all of us can take part in doing what is right. A change is being made with the universal language of art. But now it's time that we start sending a universal message a message of hope, a message of compassion, and a message showing what we're capable of. But not for tomorrow, for today. Yeah.
صباح يهدينا وردي وشمس الغارج